Okay, well, we're going to talk about confidence level. Confidence level here. And um, use confidence level and hopefully be able to know the difference between confidence intervals. So we're going to check our understanding about confidence level. And as part of this, and here we have an example. So as part of a school project about response bias, Ellery surveyed a random sample of 25 students from her high school. One of the questions in the survey required the students to state their GPA out loud. Based on the response, Ellery said that she was 90% confident that the interval from 3.14 to 3.5 captures a mean GPA for all students at her high school. Okay, so right here we have a confidence interval, okay, of 3.14 to, all right, uh, I'll just put this confidence interval from here to 3.52, okay, 3.52. Now, we want to interpret the confidence level, not the interval. So in the past, we said, well, we would, a confidence interval, we would say this would be, we are 95% confident that the true mean, all right, of the GPA of all students at her school would be between 3.14 to 3.52. Okay, that would be confidence interval. However, for confidence level, we know that um, if Ellery, all right, would, all right, um, create many confidence, or I'll just say, 90% confidence intervals, 90% 90, 90 confidence intervals, 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 <coughs> for, uh, yeah, I'll just say for intervals, we expect, all right, 90% of those, we expect 90% to have the true mean um, GPA for all students, all students at her school, okay? And so let's just kind of examine this real quick. So if I would recreate many 90% confidence intervals, okay, so if she would do this many, many times, so this is just one time, all right? So she got a point estimate, she found the margin of error, and she found one confidence interval. So this is just one, all right, one confidence interval. But now if she would do this many times, created not many 90% confidence intervals, we would expect that 90% of them, all right, to have the true mean GPA for all students at her school, okay? So 90% of those would have the true mean GPA, all right, of all the students at her school. So that's that's what we know, all right? That's what a confidence level is. That 90% of all times that you would create confidence intervals, or a 90% confidence interval, that is, all right, um, that those would contain the true mean GPA for students in her school. Now, with that, explain what would happen to the length of the interval if the confidence level were increased to 99%. Okay, so what would be the length? Now, when we talk about length, that's talking about spread. Okay, spread, all right? And spread leads to um, variation, all right? Variation, and that actually is talking about margin of error. So when we talk about length, we basically are saying, well, how is the margin of error changing? So if we increased, the confidence level level to 99%, that would then do what to the margin of error? Well, because we're going to hopefully capture or, or have more accuracy or that we're going to capture the true mean in that interval, well, in order to capture the true mean, we have to create a wider net, all right? A wider net, a wider range of values, potentially. And so that's going to basically increase the margin of error. So the increase the confidence interval to 99, that would increase the margin of error. I just say margin of error. All right. 
um, would increase, which increases the length of the interval. Okay, and that's what we know. So if you increase the um, confidence level, you increase the margin of error, which then increases the length of the interval. All right, so you create more numbers. All right, so you have a better chance of actually getting the true mean in this case. So how would a 90% confidence interval based on a sample of 200 compared to the original, all right, 90% um, interval? Well, what do we do here? Well, we increase the sample size. So if we increase the sample size to 200, all right, what does that do? Well, if you increase the sample size, that decreases the spread. Okay, that decreases variation because everything kind of gets stringed together because our standard deviations would be go smaller and whatnot. So that actually would decrease the margin of error. So if you increase the sample size to 200, that would decrease the margin of error. All right, um, of the 90% confidence interval all right because whenever you increase sample size that decreases variation all right it decreases spread decreases standard deviation and whatnot so um describe one potential source of bias in other study that is not accounted for by the margin of error so as we said before and when we talked about confidence levels and confidence intervals everything's great you can figure out a confidence level but that doesn't mean that you actually find the true mean because if you have bad data so bad data is when we talk about bias well what could be the bias here? Well, I, maybe you heard it right away. Um, she basically required the students to state their GPA. So required students to state their GPA. That, my friends, is bias, all right? It's probably response bias, <laughs> okay? <laughs> response bias. And the reason why it's response bias is because if you had to state your GPA, you probably want to state it higher, so in front of everybody, so they don't think you're dumb or something like that. Um, are not as smart and you don't want to be embarrassed maybe i don't know if they get, she gave them an opportunity not to state their gpa but um yeah people get a little self-conscious you probably would do the same so in any case describe one potential source bias well um the source bias in only study is that um she had the students state their all right gpa uh, oops, GPA. Okay, state their GPA. Um, that may have um, inflated inflated students students um, students responses. Um, of what their actual GPA was um, because they may want to make themselves um, make themselves appear to be better, maybe smarter than they currently, currently have. All right, or maybe they just appear to be hit, maybe not better or smarter, maybe just have to appear to have a higher GPA than they currently have. Yeah, that's probably a better way of saying it. Appear to have a higher GPA than they currently have. Okay, and you can put that a, a reason why that's so. Um, basically, we the students' GPAs that may have inflated students' responses, and then they actually the GPA was because they want to make themselves appear to have a higher GPA than they currently ha really have. All right, and so that that's where the source bias comes in, and that's where we're describing it. All right, um, we say what, what that was, um, had the students to state their GPAs. And so um, 
your response price might be a little bit a little higher okay well we just went through confidence level we talked about how confidence level can affect um, margin of error and how sample size can affect margin of error and also how um, in reality is that bad data is bad data and it does not affect the margin of error at all uh, margin of error is just a calculation and um, you just want to get good data so whenever you're doing statistics my friends good data is better than bad data all right and so i hope this helps you out on confidence level and good luck and god bless and the rest of your problems